folks, today we're going to be looking at shading and layers in GIMP. I'm starting with a black and white drawing and I'll recap what I showed you in the first video. We want it to be pure solid black lines on a clean pure white background. So we use filters, that's filters, artistic, soft glow. I want to thicken the lines on this image, so to do that I go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur and the default value is okay, so I'll use that. Now filters, cartoon, both values up to maximum. If you've never used layers before, you might be a bit worried about it, it might look a bit complicated to you, but I'm going to show you a couple of very simple little tricks that you can use when you're shading your images. It makes things much easier and more fun. Okay, so I've got the basic colours in and I want to add some different tones. But I don't want to disturb these black lines on the main image. The way to change the colours without disturbing these black lines is to use different layers. So I want to shade his skin. First I'll sample his skin colour using the colour picker tool. Then I copy everything. That's select all. Edit, Copy Visible. Now, Layer, New Layer. Okay, for the default values. Now, if you look over here on the right, GIMP shows you the layers you're working with. Here's the thumbnail of the original image, and above it is your new layer. You can see it has this checkerboard pattern. This represents total transparency. This layer is brand new and totally empty. Basically, it's invisible, but it is there. Now I get the paint bucket tool and I fill this layer with the skin colour that I just sampled. Now edit, paste as, new layer. Here's a copy of your original image on top of the layer of skin colour. Make sure you're on this top layer and use colour select tool again. Click on the area of the skin colour and edit clear. It looks like nothing's happened but if you look over here there's a blank space on your top layer where that colour has been removed. What you're seeing is the skin colour on the layer below. Let's delete this bottom layer now, we don't need it anymore. Okay, so while we're done this, let me show you. I want to add some darker tones to this guy's skin and I want to do it without disturbing the original black lines. So I go to the colour box and I darken the colour. I select the paintbrush tool and I select the lower layer. Now when I start painting you can see that the top layer with the black lines, the brown hair, the green background, the lips, they're all totally unaffected. I can do whatever I like on the bottom layer, it won't affect the original outlines which remain perfectly superimposed on top of whatever I do underneath. Great, so let's do some shading. I'll give my paintbrush a fuzzy edge and I want it dark but not too heavy so I'm turning the opacity down. Now this is important, check that you are on the lower layer before you start, otherwise you'll waste a lot of time and you'll waste a lot of work. So check that first. Now I'll add some highlights, change the colour to something much lighter and increase the opacity. Now I'm going to add some more shadows using a different technique. I want to select large areas, so I get the lasso tool here and create the area I want, then I go to Colours, Brightness Contrast, and turn down the brightness. This method allows me to mark out a precise area with a sharp border, like under the eyebrows, around the bottom of the nose, etc. Okay, it looks a bit strange and a bit harsh, but now let's use the Smudge tool to soften these areas. It starts to look a bit more natural. To blur a larger area, increase the size of the brush. Okay, that's the skin, now we're going to do the same for the hair. 
Select all, edit, copy visible. This copies everything in your image that you can see. Next, layer, new layer, OK, and fill it with the colour you sampled. Now you can see you've got four layers, and the top layer is a copy of what you've done so far. Once again, we go to the top layer and sample the same colour again, and then edit, clear to delete it. Now we go to the layer we want to work on. I'm going to texture the hair, and it's a fairly simple process. First, darken the colour. Now set the paintbrush fairly thin, about 7 pixels is about right. Opacity at maximum. This cap's got pretty ordinary hair, short and wavy, so I'll just use some short strokes. Now set the colour lighter than the original shade, and do the same again, but not so much, these are just highlights. Having three shades of colour gives it some depth. Now I'm going to smudge these lines, set the width of the smudge tool a little larger than the original strokes, stroke over these lines in the same direction they're pointing. You want to go with the grain, not against the grain. Now for the eyes, the same process again. I'm just adding a little variation in colour to make them look a bit more realistic. Same for the lips. Here I'll add a little bit of shadow as well and smudge all of that. Opaque white highlights here for the reflections in the eyes and also highlights on parts of the face which catch the light the most which is the nose the eyebrows, cheekbones and the chin. You can smudge these in but not the eyes. At this point be careful because now you're working on the top image and it's all one image, there's no layers anymore. So you have to be careful not to smudge the black lines.
Now I'm going to make a small colour correction here. For the whites of the eyes, don't use absolute white. I use a sort of off-white, slightly greyish white. This makes the highlights stand out more. If his teeth were showing, I'd use the same colour for that as well. Just a few more little shadows for depth, and I think that's enough. Thanks for watching, see you soon.